In early 2014, a very small number of sailors in private counseling sessions asked Chaplain Motter about the spiritual nature of certain personal conduct. He answered according to the teachings of his denomination. These individuals did not agree and complained. In today's politically correct climate and against federal and military code, Chaplain Motter was unlawfully relieved of duty and threatened with the end of his career. Well, as you just heard there, the U.S. Navy is attempting to force out Chaplain Wes Motter. Motter, a decorated U.S. Marine for four years, uh, then as a Navy chaplain for the past 15 years, he has a spotless and exceptional record according to his uh, military reports. Yeah, Chaplain Motter was giving private care and counseling sessions to a small number of sailors. As it turns out, a handful of those sailors complained about the chaplain's biblical views. And of course, this resulted in removing him from his unit, cutting him off from ministering and his commander requesting additional actions be taken. And right now we're gonna turn our attention to Mike Berry. Also, Vera Gibbons is back with us as well to discuss this. Mike is the Director of Litigation and Military Affairs at the Liberty Institute and a senior counsel for the chaplain who we are talking about. Good to have you with us, sir. Thanks for having me on. Uh, this is just one example, uh, maybe of a broader story that's taking place in our U.S. military. Uh, Mike, go ahead and explain to us some other events, including this one, uh, that have you concerned. Well, in addition to Chaplain Motter, uh, I represent Army Chaplain Joe Lawhorn, who uh, also experienced similar discrimination against him when he was conducting a suicide prevention training briefing uh, for members of his unit. And when he began to talk about how his faith had helped him deal with uh, and cope with some of the depression he had experienced uh, as a, a, an Army Ranger prior to becoming a chaplain, somebody in the audience complained about that to the media, and he was he was punished for that by his commanding officer. So uh, you, you take you know an Army chaplain. Now we've got a Navy chaplain with Chaplain Motter. We've represented a member of the United States Air Force who was punished because of his beliefs, his, his uh, sincerely held religious beliefs, we're seeing that really no branch of the military is immune and, and, and it doesn't matter whether they're enlisted, whether they're officers, whether they're chaplains, whether they uh, serve in other functions, that, that really what we're seeing now is an overt hostility to religion and religious expression mm -hmm. within our military, which is really ref reflective of what's happening in our society as a whole. Well, Mike, we actually, we actually have a clip of Chaplain Motter talking about how he feels. Um, take a listen and we'll get your reaction on the other side. When I think that I was ministering to uh, Navy sailors and Marines and SEALs over time, and for the Navy to detach me for cause, uh, I feel betrayed. I feel dishonored for my 15 years, now almost 20 total, of my service to my country. So it's not easy to hear our military personnel saying the military betrayed them. Was he betrayed? Absolutely. Uh, I think that's really the, the operative word in, in that segment you heard from Chaplain Motter. Uh, not only is the Navy betraying him, but really this is a, a betrayal of the, the from his commanding officer and from other members of his unit who are supposed to be there to look out for the chaplain, if you will, and, and to not take things that a chaplain says during private, confidential, spiritual guidance and counseling sessions. Uh, you know, these, these are sessions in which he opens himself up to people, allows them to ask him any question that they want to talk about, and he provides them with spiritual counseling in accordance with his denominational tenets and in accordance with his sincerely held religious beliefs. And they then take those, uh, what he says, and, and attempt to use them against him. That is a betrayal of the highest order. It betrays the confidentiality that is supposed to exist, the sacred trust between chaplains and those they counsel, and also the, just the good order and, order and discipline that's supposed to exist within the military where these types of things don't happen. Mm -hmm. Mike, do you expect this trend, to train, uh, this, uh, trend to change when there is a change in the commander-in-chief? I really and sincerely hope so. And, uh, you know, I don't know if this is necessarily something where th these incidents are coming straight from the top. I, I don't want to go that far, but I certainly think that the atmosphere and the climate within the United States military, look, I served uh, while President Bush was president, and then I was also on active duty during the, uh, President Obama's tenure, at least part of it. And I did begin to see some shifts 
And they were subtle at first, but lately they've become seismic in, in, in nature. And we're beginning to really see, uh, I think, those who are hostile to religious freedom, those who are hostile to religious expression by anybody in America, beginning to flex their muscles, if you will. Well, you know, he was basically reassigned while they, condu while they conduct an investigation. So do you think that was the wrong move? They're not saying he can't go back. I think the investigation itself was the wrong move. Okay. Uh, one of the things the commanding officer has at their disposal is the ability, the discretion to handle things at the lowest level possible. And if there's an allegation or an accusation that somebody within that command is, is, has said or done something that somebody else finds inappropriate, then really it's incumbent upon the commanding officer to just take that person aside and get their side of the story first and find out, you know, just talk to me. What, what's going on here? especially somebody with 15 years of experience with the type of service record, the exemplary service record that Chaplain Motter has, and to literally throw that out the window and say, I don't care, none of that means anything to me. I don't care if he served with Navy SEALs. I don't care if he deployed and ministered to our Navy SEAL teams. I don't care if he served with Marines or if he's a prior enlisted Marine. All that didn't matter to, the, to Chaplain Motter's commanding officer. All he cared about was political correctness. And he said so in his report. I'm not making that up. He said, he doesn't think that Chapel Motter is capable of functioning in this pluralistic and diverse Navy. That, and what that is code speak for is political correctness is now the mantra of the day. And anybody in our military that doesn't toe the line of political correctness, we're going to root you out and we're going to figure out a way to get rid of you. Mike, we want to ask the you in a moment what you hope for. We want to ask you what you hope for in just a moment. But first, let's listen to what the chaplain hopes for. My hope and prayer is that truth will prevail, religious liberty can be restored, and what is taken away from us, my First Amendment rights, my freedom of speech, and for me to be able to operate as a military chaplain, an ordained minister with my church to our American military men and women. And that has to be the, the outcome. It has to be the outcome because that's who we are as America. Mike, real quickly, in a word, what do you hope for? Uh, what Chaplain Motter said is exactly right. We just want truth to prevail. We want to see him vindicated. We want to see him restored. We want to see the Navy take accountability for what it's done here. To hold those who need to be held accountable, hold them accountable. And do exactly what Congress has said. Congress just sent a letter to the Secretary of the Navy saying, we meant what we said when we passed laws protecting religious freedoms. All right, Mike. Sports. We'll have to leave it there. I'm sorry we're out of time, but it's been great talking to you, and good luck on your case here with Chaplain Motter.